the Joe Rogan experience. So tell me what the training's been like. What, what was the first day you started MMA training? <laughs> <laughs> I would tell you, like, I was having anxiety for about a week. I couldn't sleep. Really? I couldn't really eat because I had signed a contract with the PFL, but I didn't have a plan, and it was bothering me. It was like, what the fuck? You know, so I'm like, okay, where am I training at? Who am I training with? When do I start getting ready? Like, Was it the conversation with John Jones that brought you to Jackson Winkle John? Um, I was actually going to reach out to them, but thank God they reached out to me. Oh, and perfect. I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was like, I was gonna, I already had hit up John mm -hmm. up on um, – on Instagram, and he was being all busy and stuff, and he didn't get back with me until I landed in Albuquerque. He was like, yo, you're coming to Albuquerque? He's like, yeah, I'm going to put you up in a hotel and let you drive my car. And I'm like, dude, thanks, but it would have been great to hear from you, like, last week, <laughs> you know, but he ended up helping me out with that. And um, I trained him for about, like, a good two or three weeks, and, and uh, Johnny Bones was there the first week, like, watching, uh, kind of scoping a little bit, and it was like, we just figured out that we were twins, and that was the best thing ever because he's a hard worker. He's smart. He's strategic, and we believe in hard work. And he started drilling me like like, like the coaches would just sit on the side and just watch us for three, four hours, and they would see, like, I'm full of energy. I'm like, let's go. What else you got? And, you know, he was teaching me stuff, and uh, Coach Wink would come in a little bit. Sometimes Coach Jackson would come in, but sometimes it was just me and Johnny, and they would be just kind of – just looking at greatness from the outside and they would never give me any, any, um, you know, crap after, but like my, like my first day going into Jackson wing gym, I looked at the cages and stuff and I was walking to the gym, to the cage. And I thought to myself, I was like, what the fuck am I doing here? When was the first day you grappled? First day. First day. First day. And that's the thing. I thought I said that in my head. I'm like, Jesus, what am I doing here? <laughs> and I said it out loud. And then Misha, <laughs> who works for Jackson Lee Jim, he looked at me, he's like, Clarissa, it's going to be okay. And I was like, what? And he was like, you just said, Jesus, what are you doing here? I'm like, oh, I'm so out of my mind. I thought I said it in my head. I said it out loud. <laughs> like, I'm not even, I'm not even, I'm not even saying right now. <laughs> so, so, That's hilarious. Um, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just so like, right. I'm, I'm, you know, just nervous. And they were like, um, I think, Coach Jackson asked me, he said, uh, what are you most worried about? And I'm like, I'm not worried about the striking, the punching, or the kicking. I'm not worried about that. I'm like, I'm just worried about being on the ground and not knowing how to get up. Like, right. I've been having nightmares about this shit. And all of a sudden, he just was like, all right, get on your back. Uh, like, what? <laughs> that sounds like Greg. And he was like, we're, we're, that's what we're going to yeah. start with. And yeah. then he's like, we're going to strengthen your weaknesses and also – uh, make it to where you can put everything together to where it's you. And ever since that day, I've just been super comfortable. I think I had one one training in jiu-jitsu where I was like, man, this was so hard today. But did, well, we did the same thing like the next day, and I was way better and comfortable at it. It's just like being on my back and having to fight off my back is just – it's just not what boxers do. Right. You know, so it was like it was uncomfortable. But – we had been doing different stuff on our back, but then just this one drill was like, oh, man, this is stressful. You know, I didn't feel like. What I was, was it like defending against ground strikes? Like when you're on like when you're on your back and someone's hitting you? Well, that's the thing. Was that weird? We had He taught me what the defense was. And he said, and you were worried about somebody hitting you in the face, but you got to realize that they got to they gotta make it past your feet to then get you to the face. So it's like a lot of leg action really is and a lot of uh, shrimps. A lot of um, just keeping your feet there, keeping your hands up, being being defensive, and knowing what to do when when they do get past your feet, or like or like what to do. So that's my thing of like, I'm not worried about it happening. I just want to know what to do when it when it when it does happen. Right. Like I want to have a game plan for everything. And when they understood that, they were like, you know, you're a very smart fighter, and they start teaching me, and I learn stuff really really fast. I don't know if it's because I'm younger or because I'm smart. But well, I you're an elite so athlete. I mean, you understand your body at a very, very high level. That's, I think, like I said earlier about whatever you want to do in life. Like, if you become an elite boxer, like you have a two-time Olympic gold medalist, I think you could do anything. It's just a matter of if you put the same drive mm -hmm. and focus and dedication that you've done to boxing, you could apply that to anything. Whether it's you want to become a, a dedicated grappler, 
I think you could be a world class grapp- grappler, a hundred percent. You just have to just dedicate takes yourself. The time. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I'm going to do. You know, yeah. I'm trying to. I think I'm supposed to fight in boxing again, like September, maybe December. So this time I have here from April to September, December is really going to be focused on MMA. So I'm putting in a putting a putting in a time for it, but then it's still just like. Just got to see how much I can consume. Because some, so some days they teach me so much. And, mm. when I, and when I'm like, oh, my God. Like, like my brain is tired from thinking about all this. But I learn it. And once I learn it, I get it. And I take so many notes in my phone. Yeah. And I got videos of stuff that I have on my phone. So when I'm at home, I can do some of the training and do some of the techniques. Just so I can just keep it in my mind and keep it refreshed. Because I understand how important repetitiveness is. Like, it's super important. Yeah, it is. It's everything. And when you're when you're training for ground fighting, do you ever think of yourself as maybe f- competing in a wrestling tournament or a jiu-jitsu tournament or something like that someday? Nope. I, no? I, I don't look at that because Coach Tusa, who's my MMA coach, MMA jiu-jitsu coach, and Coach Jackson and Coach Wink, they said the best MMA fighters are the ones who know how to mix everything up together. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you go into just wrestling, then you start getting into wrestling mode, and then you do jiu-jitsu when you start doing jiu-jitsu. And he's like, it's you want to know how to punch and throw your kicks and punch and be defensive and everything together and do jiu-jitsu stuff all with the MMA style, which I right. feel like was super smart. And I only can say this stuff because I asked them the same thing. Like, I think I'm so competitive that when I found out about like the color of the belts in jiu-jitsu, I'm like, oh, I got to be a black belt. Right. <laughs> right? And they're like, mm, not so fast. Like, we want to teach you jiu-jitsu and you to learn it, but you're not going to learn like the regular person will learn it. You're learning strictly for MMA. Mm-hmm. And so, just learning that, it's like, once you get more profound in MMA and you learn how to mix stuff up and you have enough jujitsu to get you to high when you're against high level fighters who know this then we can start getting you more experience in jujitsu but right now we want you just to do it just to learn it with MMA style do you remember the first time you tapped somebody out me yeah I haven't you've never tapped anybody out uh-uh. no no so do you do just plain jujitsu sparring do you roll yeah, I I, I, um, I do rolling with Coach Tusa, which oh, some days is fun and some days it is not. Because he's, you know, he's a black belt, I think, with like sure. purple stripes and stuff. And, I mean, he doesn't take it easy. You know, he's super like, I hate being grabbed. So my main thing is like, <laughs> oh, you grabbed me. Uh, get off me. <laughs> get off me. <laughs> right? right? And he's like, no, you want to do stuff that can advance your movement. How could you get in a position to where you're winning and at first, my mind was completely defensive, which I'm super, super lax at getting people off me. Like, you grab me. Okay, he touched me here. Oh, he touched me here. Okay, let me get back here. I'm on the ground. He showed me this. Let's work on that. But, um, oh, I see an arm bar. Let me try to grab it. You know, just being mm-hmm. like that. But at first, I was super defensive. Now, I'm, like, kind of offensive with it and when we're trying to do the whole jujitsu thing i'm like man it's still hard it's a whole different level of breathing um it's five minutes compared to two minutes that i do in boxing right even though i spar three minutes but still three minutes compared to five it's way different but um just getting that cardio up there and um just having to do like the wrestling stuff it's not it's not easy by far but it's fun some days it's fun, and some days I'm like, man, I can't wait till this hour and two hours I'm going to get the <laughs> hell out of here. <laughs> so are you doing any live jujitsu roles with other people other than the coach, or are you just doing it only with the coach right now? Uh, I've done some kickboxing sparring with other fighters. I haven't done anything jujitsu yet, um, but that's because of the timing, too. Like Once we were really starting to get into it, I had my boxing match get scheduled, and that was – to me, I had to make that be more important than MMA at the time. Catch new episodes of the Joe Rogan Experience for free only on Spotify. Watch back catalog JRE videos on Spotify, including clips. Easily, seamlessly switch between video and audio experience. On Spotify, you can listen to the JRE in the background while using other apps and can download episodes to save on data cost all for free. Spotify is absolutely free. You don't have to have a premium account to watch new JRE episodes. You just need to search for the JRE on your Spotify app. Go to Spotify now to get this full episode of the Joe Rogan Experience.